Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 10th Get to Know Your uh, State Forest webinar. We are officially halfway through our 20 state forest districts as of today. So thank you very much for joining us for this wonderful halfway point. Um, my name is Sarah Corcoran. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the interim deputy director for the Pennsylvania chapter of the Sierra Club. Um, I wear several hats. Today, I will be wearing the hat of the organizer and coordinator for the Save Pennsylvania Forest Coalition, which is a coalition of partners that has been putting on this series. Um, today, we are joined by Julian from the Pinchot State Forest District in Northeast Pennsylvania, um, my stomping grounds. And um, I'm very excited to be able to uh, have him on today and to hear what he has to say. So a um, little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are recording, as I said earlier, so please make sure that you stay on mute and have your uh, camera off during the presentation. We will have a Q&A portion at the end of our presentation today. Uh, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please put it in the chat bar at the bottom of your screen, and I will answer those questions at the end. Um, or actually, I won't answer them, but Julian will answer them. Um, so uh, you don't have to worry about coming off mute at the end. Uh, if you would like to, you can go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat, um, but please do not feel that you need to do so. Um, this is an educational webinar uh, that we are very, very thankful to be able to offer. And um, we do have closed captioning enabled. So if you need to utilize that, um, it is the little CC button at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions or tech concerns throughout the presentation, I will be monitoring the chat. So please feel free to put them there. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn over the presentation to Julian. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that intro introduction. Um, as Sarah said, uh, my name is Julian Mazza. I'm one of the service foresters here for the Pinchot Forest District. Um, Starting off, uh, we'll go a little bit of an overview of uh, the Bureau of Forestry as a whole, a um, little bit of the history of the district um, and kind of throughout the state. And then we'll get into a little bit more of the specifics of our district, um, some of the things that we do here. Um, so a little, little bit of an overview of the Bureau. Um, we're roughly 2.2 million acres across the state. Uh, most of that state forest thing you can kind of see in north central PA here. Um, here's our district uh, covering Lackawanna and Luzerne, Wyoming, Susquehanna and Wayne counties. Um, most of our forest land is kind of uh, comprised in Lackawanna and Luzerne counties. Um, although we do have a, a small parcel in northeastern Wayne County uh, along the Delaware River. Um, so you kind of see our, our district boundary there. Uh, the mission of the Bureau uh, is to ensure the long-term health, viability, and productivity of the Commonwealth's forests and to conserve native wild plants. Uh, so that's kind of our mission and what we do. Um, go into a little bit of the uh, history. I won't spend too much time on the, on the history. If you guys watched any of the other previous videos, um, you should be uh, pretty well schooled up on uh, the history of the Bureau and some of our uh, the uh, the founding people that are responsible for some of the uh, for for a lot of the forest shit that's done in the state today. So, uh, one of the names uh, you've probably heard uh, before is Dr. Joseph Rothrock. Um, he was a doctor and a bio botanist. Um, he's considered the father of PA forestry. Um, and we'll go into a little bit of history of the um, uh, kind of land use in Pennsylvania, but. Um, Throughout the uh, 19th century, a lot of the area was cut over uh, throughout Pennsylvania and the lands were kind of degraded and wildfires are very rampant. Um, so a lot of people kind of saw the need to uh, protect these lands and kind of saw what was going on. Um, so uh, Rothrock kind of pushed for a forestry commission to be started within the state. Um, and he 
pretty much pushed that this commission should acquire land uh, to protect uh, the water resources and to uh, reestablish forested areas. Um, also to ensure wood supplies, um, you know, to benefit the public uh, and the, the wood industry. Um, and that commission also uh, organized um, a fire protection and prevention system to, uh, you know, protect these forested lands and, and kind of get a control of the wildfires that are running uh, rampant throughout the state. Um, and also to assist uh, the wood industries and uh, help landowners uh, in uh, growing and utilizing uh, materials from the forest. So uh, that commission uh, was funded and Dr. Rothrock was appointed the first commissioner um, in 1895. So that was kind of the start of uh, protecting these uh, lands across the state. Another name that uh, hopefully you should all be aware of uh, is Gifford Pinchot. Uh, of course, that's how uh, uh, our, our state forest district is named after Gifford Pinchot. Um, he was the nation's first uh, American-born, formally trained forester in the country. Um, he's known as the father of American conservation. He kind of had uh, many hats. Uh, he was the first chief of the US Forest Service in 1905. Um, he was also the, the PA Commissioner of Forestry in 1920. Um, he was a governor for two, two uh, terms. Um, advocated really for multiple use forestry um, and you know, being able to use land sustainably um, uh, for, for forest products. And kind of his motto is the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Um, if you're familiar with the, the Milford area, it's just outside of our district, um, but his uh, kind of homestead is, is up there at Great Towers. It's where he, he grew up. Um, next is Myra Lloyd Dock. Um, she was a, a botanist and an early educator. Um, you know, did a lot of lectures and uh, touring around. And same thing in, in this time period when a lot of these lands were degraded. Um, she was uh, very instrumental in, in educating the public um, and educating people on uh, conserving these lands. So she was appointed to the PA Forestry Reservation Commission uh, in 1901. And this commission was really responsible for uh, seeking out these lands to, to conserve and protect uh, and buying them up um, to have in these forest reserves. So she was the first woman to serve in that position. Um, you know, like, as I said, she advocated for the expansion of the state forest system and a lot of these urban forests and urban parks. Um, during her tenure in office, uh, over 175,000 acres were purchased um, in just in the first year in, in her office. Uh, and like I said, she gave lectures and, and toured around and really educated the people on uh, forestry and the benefits of forests and, and sustainable forest management. Uh, so like I said, a lot of the uh, area pretty much across uh, Pennsylvania was harvested uh, in the 17, late 1700s into the 1800s. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the uh, uh, woods was cut for building houses, uh, sources of heat before uh, coal really kind of took over and before there was a lot of electricity. Um, and then, uh, you know, the charcoal industry, tanneries, a lot of the uh, hemlock uh, trees were cut and stripped for the bark for, for uh, the tanning industry. Um, and then later on, when coal mining became uh, prevalent, a lot of the forests were cut to support the coal mining, coal mining industry, um, build houses, towns, uh, a lot of the timbers used in the coal mines themselves. So throughout, throughout the 1800s, as you can see in this picture here, a lot of the, the state kind of looked like this very desolate, uh, cut over and um, kind of left. Um, some other uh, historical uses in our area. Um, we have an extensive coal mining uh, history throughout the area here in the Northeast. Um, and, and like I said, a lot to support that coal mining industry, a lot of the wood products were used to build homes uh, for these coal mining towns and, and supporting the, the coal mining operations. Um, there was a lot of strip mines and surface mines. Um, so this kind of created a, a, a large scar on the landscape. Uh, and today we deal with a lot of those issues. There's a lot of acid mine drainage issue, issues. Uh, we do a lot of uh, mine reclamation projects throughout our, uh, 
this area here. So in this top right picture, you can kind of see um, this orange line here. This is actually the Lackawanna River that feeds into the Susquehanna River. And this is all acid mine drainage from uh, a large borehole that was uh, just outside here in the, the town of Old Forge. Um, it, it's a huge pollu pollution source. Uh, it's actually one of the largest point source pollution uh, sources within the whole Chesapeake Water Bay. Um, and then you can kind of see these black areas here. Uh, these are just old uh, column banks, just some of the mining waste um, that's still left and nothing can really grow on it. Um, so a lot of the areas, um, at least in the, in the valley, um, kind of has these scars and, and things that we're left to deal with now. Um, so some of the past mining history, like I said, uh, the Avondale mine disaster, um, this is actually located on state forest land now. But um, in September 1869 at Avondale, um, a fire had broke out. Um, one of the uh, mine shafts caught on fire and eventually the breaker caught on fire. Um, and there was really only one entrance and exit into the mine. So, and it was right where the, the shaft was caught on fire. So 110 men actually died, uh, mostly due to just a suffocation, uh, low oxygen levels in the mine. Um, it was one of the deadliest mine disasters in PA. And pretty much this disaster led to a lot of uh, regulation and new um, laws and safety measures put in place uh, for the mining industry. So there's a picture of the Avondale uh, breaker there, you can kind of see. Uh, so getting a little bit more into the specific district history. Um, originally, our district was named the Lackawanna State Forest, uh, primarily because our, our, the first acquisition was in Lackawanna County. So in 1902, uh, approximately a li little under 3,000 acres is purchased in Thornhurst. So that was our first acquisition. Um, and then from 1909 to 1920, um, again, 2,400 acres were added to the Thornhurst tract. And pretty much uh, remain the same. Some smaller parcels added into the district uh, around that area. But then uh, in 1957, uh, 1,400 acres were purchased in West, West Nanticoke. So that kind of started our uh, expansion into, into Luzerne County and uh, getting some more, some more lands outside of Lackawanna County. Um, so then by the end of the 20th, 20th century, our district had grown to a little over 8,000 acres. And then today we have just shy of 50,000 acres. Um, so really the past couple decades here, we've, we've been adding on a lot of state forest land. Um, a lot of that has been um, land purchased from uh, the Theta Water Company um, and some other parcels uh, through some other purchases. But uh, we really grew the district um, within the past couple decades here, uh, which is really great. Uh, more on the history, uh, Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, many of you are probably familiar with this. Um, it was established in 1933, uh, pretty much to create jobs after the uh, Great Depression and complete a lot of the environmental projects throughout the, the country. Um, so uh, again, back going back into the history, a lot of these degraded lands, uh, they'd plant trees, they fought a lot of the wildfires, um, they'd build roads, dams, uh, different buildings. A lot of these areas are what we know now today as state parks. Um, you know, kind of near here, Promised Land State Park. Um, there's a CC camp out there. Uh, a lot of the infrastructure there was built from the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps. Uh, we did have a CCC camp on our state forest land um, and the Thornhurst track. It was the Bear Lake Camp. Uh, it was created in 1933 and then closed in 1937. Um, and these are some pictures of the barracks uh, in Thornhurst there from that camp um, and some of the guys that were uh, working at that camp. So they, they do a lot of surveying, um, again, build the road system out there. Um, there's different historical occurrences of them uh, fighting wildfires in that area. Um, so a lot, a lot of our uh, uh, infrastructure we could accredit to them, at, at least in most of the state parks. Um, so this is a little bit of a breakdown of our, uh, our district staff. 
Um, so we have a district forester and two assistant district foresters. Um, and a couple, couple different types of foresters on our staff. Uh, we have two service foresters. Um, we have a recreation forester who's tasked with uh, managing a lot of our recreational programs throughout the district, uh, which is pretty extensive. We'll get into that later. Uh, we also have a resource forester who's primarily um, tasked with managing all the state forest land, um, conducting timber sales, um, th things of that sort. Uh, we do have two forest technicians, um, and they also assist in those duties. Uh, we do have a resource forester vacancy right now and another forest technician vacancy. Um, we do have two full-time rangers uh, and a seasonal ranger. Um, obviously, they're tasked with uh, uh, kind of the uh, law enforcement side of things throughout our state forest land. Uh, so we do have two maintenance divisions, one's that over at Thornhurst, um, and then we have another one um, kind of inside the valley is where they're located. Uh, they do a lot of work over on our Moon Lake track and the Harvey's Creek tracks. Uh, on the forest fire side of things, we have uh, kind of two, uh, two divisions. Uh, we have a, a fire forester out of Hazleton, um, and then we have a forest fire supervisor that's out of uh, Lackawanna County, um, and we'll get into a little bit of that later too. And then we have a, a, a wide array of different uh, equipment operators and maintenance repairmen and skilled laborers that help out with uh, uh, the upkeep of uh, our road systems and things like that. Uh, so getting into a little bit of our eco regions and uh, you can see on the map here, uh, our district is kind of comprised of three different eco regions. Uh, we have this ridge, ridge and valley system, um, Kind of in southwestern oh, Luzerne County. I, I, I unclicked this. This was this was um, about ten times. And then, then I, I pushed. Sorry about that. Uh, so we have uh, that Ridge and Valley system kind of in southern uh, Luzerne County coming up. This is the uh, the Wyoming Valley, and the, the Scranton is right here in the Mid Valley area. Uh, we have the glaciated low plateau, and then a little bit of our district has some of the uh, glaciated Pocono Plateau, uh, kind of in Southern uh, Lackawanna County. Um, so some of our dominant forest types, you could see here, a lot of our uh, forested area on uh, the district is a lot of oak. Um, we do have some more Northern hardwoods area, but a lot of that is dominated by, by uh, oak forests. So our district is pretty much broken down into eight major tracks. Uh, we have the Penobscot Ridge Track. Uh, these, these tracks here, if you could follow my pointer, uh, that's a little over 4,000 acres. We have the Crystal Lake Track right here outside of Mountaintop. Uh, that's just under 8,000 acres. Uh, and then over here, we have the Harvey's Creek Track. Uh, that's a little over 6,000 acres. Deep Hollow, uh, that's about 1,400 acres. Um, if you're familiar with the Seven Tubs area, that's located also within this deep hollow tract. Uh, then Thornhurst here, it's one of our bigger tract. It is the biggest tract, uh, a little over 15,000 acres. Um, Montage, uh, 7,800 acres. Right in here is the Elmhurst tract, uh, kind of follows Roaring Brook. Uh, that's a little over 3,000 acres. And then we have the Music Mountain tract here. Uh, that's about 20, uh, 2,300 acres um, right here in the Music Mountains. Like I said, we do have a, a about a 20 acre tract along the Delaware River. Uh, it's not on this map. And we also have a couple of smaller tracks kind of dotted along uh, around the area in the valley here, um, as well as some of the river islands uh, is state forest land as well. So managing the, the Pinchot Forest District, um, we use ecosystem management, which is kind of this holistic approach to uh, managing the forest land. Um, again, it's, it takes into account more than just the timber uh, aspect of things. We incorporate social and economic, economic values, uh, recreational activities, um, you know, any, any kind of uh, 
uh, endangered or unique plant sites. Um, so like I said, we manage for recreation, scenic beauty, uh, plant and animal habitat, uh, a sustainable um, timber, um, and many other uses and values, uh, like I said, un unique and uh, uh, endangered uh, plant communities. Some of our guiding documents um, will work from the top down. So uh, the strategic plan is kind of the overarching plan. Uh, it's it, Penn's Woods is the name of it. It was created in 1995. Pretty much uh, provides most of the overarching policies and the direction for uh, you know, the long-term health and sustainability of, of Penn's Woods and uh, our, our forest land. From there down, we have the State Forest Resource Management Plan. Um, you know, that kind of takes those really broad policies, kind of formats them into some more focused uh, goals and objectives um, and makes it a little bit more operational, uh, operationally manageable. From there, we have the, our, our own district resource management plan, uh, and that narrows it down even to more uh, to our specific resources that we have in district here. Uh, and it really gives specific goals and objectives uh, to managing those resources that we have here uh, in the Pincho State Forest. Um, that was created in 2019, and it's about a, a five to 10 year planning horizon for that plan. Um, and then uh, we also have the district activity plan. So that's a, an annual plan that's created, uh, kind of highlights some of our activities that we're doing on our state forest land um, and things that are planned for the next year. Uh, and these are all publicly available on the uh, district's website. So you can go on there and see our uh, district activity plans and, and read up on our, uh, our, our district resource management plan a little bit more in detail. So some of the things that we do to kind of help us uh, manage such a large area is that we have our district broken down into different landscape management units. Um, so these are kind of the building blocks of uh, how we manage our state forest land. Uh, so they, they really help us break down the forest and kind of group our, our parcels uh, into some more manageable units. Uh, they kind of have some like-minded goals and objectives. Um, so you can see here, we're, we, we have 12 different LMUs. Um, and each one kind of has its own uh, summary uh, data for it and its own goals and objectives. Um, so it makes it a little bit more uh, easier to, to manage these areas. So some of the uh, unique plant communities that we have within our district here, um, it's kind of unique to Pennsylvania is the scrub oak barrens. Um, this is our Crystal Lake track. Um, Crystal Lake is right here. It's a lake that's used for uh, as, as a water source, drinking source. And on top here, you can kind of see the scrub oak uh, barren habitat. Um, it, it's really unique and it's um, really important too for a lot of uh, different, different uh, Lepidoptera species. Um, there's some unique plants that, that are found here, uh, some New Jersey tea and um, some, some other uh, unique uh, plants. Um, there was a study done in 1998 um, to kind of see what type of uh, butterfly and moth species are uh, actually in this area. Uh, in that study, they found uh, 111 different moth species and 11 different butterfly species. Um, another study was done in 2018 and with that study, they found over 500 uh, different moth species and 36 different butterfly species. So these areas are really important um, in, in conserving those different Lepidoptera species. Um, you know, they're important as pollinators. We usually think of pollinators as bees, uh, honeybees, but there's all these other different uh, species that are, are just as important for pollinators. Uh, in, in, this scrub oak barren is kind of found in some other parts throughout the district too, um, in smaller quantity, but this uh, Crystal Lake track is, is kind of the, uh, the widespread area for that. Another unique uh, plant community that we have in our district here is the Hemlock uh, Palestrian Forest. Uh, it's heavily shaded late successional communities. Uh, you can kind of see a lot of hemlock growing. 
um, kind of these boggy areas I uh, found along swamps, um, around glacial lakes. Um, the soil here is really acidic. Um, like I said, uh, it, it, a lot of these areas are kind of home to a lot of different rare orchids and plants that thrive on those, uh, those kind of wet, marshy, acidic sites. Um, so creeping snowberry, Labrador tea, um, there's a bunch of, a uh, couple different types of um, uh, like pitcher plants, uh, sundew, things like that. Um, they're also found in these areas. Um, we, do, we do have the spruce, spruce Swamp Natural Area. Uh, it's located on the Thornhurst Tract. Um, it's about 70 acres, so it's a, a natural bog. Uh, a lot of black and red spruce are found there. There's balsam fir that's growing uh, naturally there. Uh, some tamarack, again, and some of those other um, smaller vegetative species that are uh, kind of unique to these glaciated um, bog areas, kind of in this Pocono region here. Um, so you kind of see there in the map, uh, this is located on our uh, Thornhurst tract. So wildlife, obviously we have a huge land base um, and we don't, we, we also manage for uh, a whole host of game and non-game wildlife species. Um, obviously deer, hunting is a, a popular sport on our state forest land, uh, but we also have things like uh, rattlesnakes and some other things that are uh, just as important that we, we also try to manage for. Um, so the State Wildlife Action Plan is administered by the uh, Pennsylvania Game Commission and the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Um, there's a lot of objectives and guidance within that plan that we use uh, to manage for a whole host of uh, different wildlife species uh, within our state forest land. Um, so we do have a broad mix of forest and habitat types throughout the district. Um, like I said, some of those uh, scrub oak barrens, um, they're, they're important to a whole different host of wildlife. Um, a lot of different uh, bird species that are uh, in, uh, in, endangered and threatened uh, that are kind of within uh, our area here. Um, there's some things that we do on our state forest land to kind of improve those wildlife habitats. Uh, we do things like aspen cuts um, to kind of keep some really successional uh, forest land for uh, things like grouse and some other uh, uh, bird types. Uh, we do some native meadow, meadow plantings um, throughout our forest land here. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, our Moon Lake tract, um, we're doing a lot of that work there. And then uh, just habitat improvement uh, through forest management activities. Uh, a lot of times that goes hand in hand. Um, not all wildlife need uh, fully mature forest. So uh, through some of those forest management activities, a lot of the early successional habitats created um, that's needed for uh, a whole host of different uh, wildlife. Um, again, in, this, in our area here, uh, the past mining uh, practices uh, did create some habitat for bat populations. So kind of scattered throughout our, our area and on state forest land, uh, there's different mine shafts that are still open. Um, that are used by bats. Um, and we do partner with the Pennsylvania Game Commission uh, to protect those habitats and, and do some enhancement projects for that. Um, so recreation, obviously it's probably one of the, the uh, biggest uses for our state forest land, especially, um, you know, we're, we're located kind of around the scranton wilkes area. So it, it's a highly populated area. Uh, a lot of our state forest land is used uh, pretty heavily um, by the by the people that live here. Um, so state forest land is pretty much geared towards more low density dispersed recreation uh, compared to something that you might see at state parks. Um, you know, there's um, you know state parks is kind of more just heavily compacted. Um, you know, in kind of more densely in one area. Um, some of the different hiking trails uh, that we have on state forest land here. Um, we have hiking only trails that are only open to foot traffic. Uh, kind of the one, one of the most notable trails is the Pincho Trail. Uh, it's our state forest hiking trail within the district. Uh, that's located out at Thornhurst. It's about 26 miles long and it's 
uh, popular for popular for backpacking um, and overnight hikes. We also have a, uh, 12 additional trails, 12 additional miles of hiking only trails throughout the district, um, mostly in our uh, uh, recreation areas. We do have shared use trails, about 30 mile, 39 miles of uh, shared use trails throughout the district. And those are open to uh, hiking, mountain biking, uh, horseback riding, uh, cross country skiing, um, pretty much everything besides motorized um, recreation. Uh, then we have about 26 miles of uh, snowmobile trails. Uh, those are located out in the Thornhurst tract. Um, we do also have the Delaware and Lehigh Rail Trail, um, kind of, excuse me, cuts through some of the uh, uh, land over by the Seven Tubs area. Um, and it's a, about a four, 140 miles long, starting uh, in Luzerne County, going down through uh, Bucks County. Uh, some of those pieces along the uh, DNL trail aren't really complete and there's a lot of work uh, that's going on to uh, connect that trail and make it one uh, whole usable trail. But we do have some sections that go through state forest land. So here this picture is uh, Moon Lake Park, uh, well, Moon Lake Recreation Area. Um, you can see all the boats that are out there, they do stock it with trout. Um, really popular for ice fishing and, and kayaking and um, people just shoreline fishing there. Uh, and this is the Pine Hill Vista located out uh, Thornhurst. Uh, it's pretty pretty neat if you ever get a chance to go for a hike up there. Uh, you could see pretty far, uh, pretty much 360 degrees. Um, some of the other recreational opportunities, like I said, hunting is uh, you know, very popular throughout our state forest land. Most of our areas are open to hunting except the picnic and recreation areas. Um, Fishing, like I said, Moon Lake is really popular for fishing. Uh, Harvey's Creek and Roaring Brook is also really popular for uh, the trout fishermen. Um, and we do also have a, a lot of different smaller native streams throughout the state forest land that uh, support um, native brook trout. Uh, you can see one there. <clears throat> Picnicking, uh, we have two kind of picnic areas. It's, uh, one of them is the Moon Lake uh, Recreation Area. We have three pavilions out there. Um, and then the Manny Gordon picnic area out at Thornhurst, uh, we have uh, two pavilions at that spot. Um, camping, we have primitive camping open for throughout most of the forest district, uh, except those recreation areas. And then we also have motorized camping. Uh, we have 18 spots throughout the state forest land. Uh, most of those are at Moon Lake and we have a few over at Thornhurst. Um, pretty much those motorized camping spots are uh, a little gravel spot with a picnic table and a firing, um, and those do require a camping permit. Uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later too. Uh, so like I said, boating is really popular in the district to, at Moon Lake. Um, it's open to non-motorized and electric motored uh, watercraft, so kayaks and any kind of electric powered boat. Um, we do have uh, access to the uh, Lehigh River, uh, kind of near the Thornhash, Thornhurst tract here uh, along River Road. Uh, the parking spot is right here. And you could um, drag your kayak or canoe down and enter the Lehigh uh, River through there. Uh, like I said before, we also have a, a number of river islands on the Susquehanna River. Uh, some of those are kind of smaller, just kind of uh, gravel bar type islands. And some are a little bit bigger that are uh, forested. And um, a couple of years back, there was uh, some uh, an effort to kind of establish some camping areas on those islands. Um, so, so some of them are a little bit bigger uh, with a, a picnic table and a, a fire ring established there. Um, rock climbing. Uh, we do have uh, one rock climbing spot over in the uh, Makanaqua area there along that Penobscot Ridge tract. Um, you can kind of see a map here. Uh, where that main wall climbing area is. Um, uh, any kind of use of fixed anchors is not permitted. Um, so like anything you see here, like these hanger uh, bolt type, bolt type uh, fixtures, that's not permitted. Uh, but any kind of uh, removable type uh, anchor system is, is permitted to be used. Um, you, know, you know, we kind of take a look at these climbing areas and make sure that there's not going to be any kind of impact, any kind of endangered uh, plant or wildlife species or anything like that. 
um, but uh, rock climbing is permitted uh, in this area. Uh, going back to the camping opportunities, uh, we do have an, a new online reservation system. If you guys have ever uh, camped on any of the state forest land before, uh, usually just call up the district and get a, a free camping permit. Uh, now there is a fee that's associated with that. Since we've gone to the online uh, version here, pretty similar to what state parks already has set up. Um, so if you go onto the website here, uh, you could uh, just type type in the Pincho State Forest, and it'll come up with a, a list of all our campsites uh, and a map of those as well. So. Um, one uh, little note of caution, though, if you do type, sometimes they'll ask you to just to type in the uh, zip code. If you do type in the zip code, um, it'll take you to a random place over in uh, Kazakhstan or something. There's a little bug worked out uh, that we need to work out with that yet, um, as far as the GPS coordinates, um, but we are working on to get that fixed. So uh, if you do run into that issue, just uh, search our uh, Pinchot State Forest and you'll get the, the right area there. Uh, so like I said, uh, one of the recreational areas is the Moon Lake Recreational Area. Um, it was acquired from Luzerne County in 2015. Uh, previously, it was a county park. Um, so again, it was an area that was kind of used as a, a high density recreational area. Uh, now we're trying to transition it back into a low density um, recreational use area. Um, so there's some uh, kind of some uh, uh, Issues, I guess we could say with that, there was, um, like I said, it was a really high density use area. So there's swimming pools, uh, tennis courts, a lot of buildings. Um, and we, we worked to remove all that and remediate it and kind of get it back to a more natural landscape. Um, so we, uh, we do have 12 motorized campsites here. Uh, there's about 17 miles of, of shared use trails. Uh, they're really popular with the mountain biking community. Uh, so they're, they're pretty popular as uh, mountain bike trails. As I said, hunting is prohibited in our uh, recreational areas and picnic areas, uh, so you cannot hunt in this area. Um, and then we are working on some cool uh, projects. Uh, we're doing some native, native meadow plantings in this area. Um, so you can kind of see this open field here. There were some tennis courts and things here. Um, so we're reverting it back to a, a native meadow planting. Uh, so you can see the bulldozer here kind of clearing that out. Uh, this was this past year. so it's, uh, reseeded uh, and getting some more uh, beneficial uh, grasses and, and wildflowers and things like that to be growing here. Uh, in the bottom left here, you could see uh, a little project that was done uh, by the uh, Audubon Society. Uh, they did a pollinator uh, little garden here. Uh, so this is kind of the early workings of that. And you can kind of see some tree tubes. They did some tree planting around here as well. Um, so just one of the cool things that we're trying to uh, incorporate some different types of habitat uh, in these areas. Uh, so the, the other recreational area that we have is the Seven Tubs area. Uh, again, that was acquired from Luzerne County. It was a county park uh, back in 2015. This area is approximately 121 acres. Uh, probably one of the most notable features um, is, is the Tubs area. Uh, you can kind of see here, uh, there's just these, these really round, smoothed out uh, tubs that were created from the glacial meltwater. Um, and there's approximately seven of them. And there's a trail that kind of uh, goes up around them. It's a really cool area. Uh, there's approximately two miles of uh, hiking uh, trails there. They're hiking only, so they're not shared use. Uh, so no um, mountain biking or anything like that. Uh, the two uh, streams that kind of run through this area, uh, really popular with the uh, trout fishing community. There's a pretty good population of wild brook trout that are sustained here. Um, this area does see a very high number of uh, visitors, especially in the summertime. Uh, so it does become a little bit challenging to manage um, that high use of the area. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll have to turn people away uh, just because the limited parking that's in the area and also just the um, impact that they're creating uh, on the landscape itself. Uh, so we try to mitigate uh, those um, uh, that that overuse of that area, um, but it is a really cool area if you guys uh, get a chance to do some hiking around there. 
Uh, PA Outdoor Corps, uh, I'll touch on this a little bit later, but they've been doing some trail projects with some other volunteer uh, help uh, in this area. Um, and this area is close to hunting, camping, and picnicking. So, so some of the, uh, we'll get into some of the water resources within the district here. So as you can see here on the left, our district's kind of split up into uh, two different main watersheds. We have the, the Delaware River uh, watershed and then the Susquehanna River watershed. On the right-hand map here, you could see the uh, DEP classified impaired streams um, and which ones are not impaired. So in the red, they're all, any, any of the streams and bodies of water that are in red are uh, classified as impaired. You can kind of see here in the valley, there's a lot of red uh, impaired streams mostly due to the um, you know, high development of the area and the past mining practices. Um, and also you can kind of see here around the Hazleton area, uh, this area had a lot of uh, past mining history too. Um, so you can kind of see some of those, those streams are impaired. Um, and then a little bit up in the Susquehanna County, a lot of this is probably from uh, high agricultural use. Um, there really, really wasn't much mining up in this area. Um, Um, so a lot of our state forests, well, some of our state forest land surrounds uh, some reservoirs that are currently used for uh, a drinking source. Um, as I said, a couple, uh, couple years ago, our state forest land grew uh, with the purchase of um, lands from the Theta Water Company. So a lot of those areas were kind of surrounding, uh, you know, the, these drinking sources. Um, so over in the Harvey's Creek track, we have Pikes Creek Reservoir. Um, we have state forest land that surrounds that uh, body of water. Over at the Crystal Lake track here, we have state forest land that surrounds Crystal Lake. Um, we have the Nesbitt and Watrous Reservoirs, um, kind of in that Springbrook area outside the valley. Uh, we have the Curtis and Elmhurst Reservoir just outside of Moscow. And then we have the Brownell Reservoir um, kind of outside of Carbondale. And then uh, Lake Scranton, we also have state forest land that surrounds uh, that, that drinking source and the headwaters to that drinking source as well. So uh, a lot of the state forest land uh, is important in man maintaining uh, those drinking uh, water sources, um, making sure that we have clean water uh, for the citizens of the area. So some of those lands that we got from the water company had uh, dams located on them. A lot of these dams were used for either uh, flood control or for water sources, uh, for small mining towns, things like that. Um, now they're not really used anymore, so they're kind of just popular party spots, um, and they do create hazards uh, for the general public. Um, you can kind of see here one of these dams, uh, people climbing on them and stuff, riding their ATVs around them, so it does kind of pose a hazard, and we are in the process of mitigating that. Um, and trying to take out these dams and kind of uh, getting the natural stream uh, flow uh, back in those areas. Uh, these dams kind of restrict the passage of uh, any kind of aquatic life up and down the river, the, the streams rather. Uh, so you can see here, obviously no fish or any kind of aquatic uh, insect is gonna be able to, to really get past this dam. So when we take these dams out, uh, we usually try to remediate them with uh, native vegetation. Uh, so native grasses, uh, and get the riparian area reforested uh, with trees and shrubs. Uh, currently, we have seven dams left on state forest land. Um, one is really uh, right now is in the process of being removed over in the Laurel Run area, um, kind of around the seven tubs there. But uh, we, ha we have seven dams left. Uh, so, you know, we do have uh, a working forest within our district here, so we do uh, a variety of timber management activities. Uh, so that includes timber harvests, uh, timber stand improvement projects. Uh, we, we do deer exclosures um, and uh, we do uh, entertain uh, prescribed fire as a management tool within the district. Um, some of the things that help us with the, those management activities um, is our al allocation model. So uh, this model pretty much uh, helps uh, balance our age classes throughout the district, excuse me, and provides really for a sustainable yield 
of, of forest products. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different constraints and parameters that are put into this model. Um, and given the size and uh, site quality of these different areas and the species that grow there, um, kind of how fast they grow, um, it spits out pretty much a, a, an annual allocation of how many acres we could sustainably harvest per year um, and, and have that bal balanced age class um, to have uh, sustain or harvestable acres into the future. So our, our allocation is roughly 160 acres uh, for our district. Um, and uh, you know, in doing so, like I said before, uh, the, these timber management uh, activities just inherently provide wildlife habitat. Um, you know, it provides browse and uh, cover for for uh, wildlife. Um, not again, not every wildlife species uh, is dependent on a, a mature forest. A lot of these need early succession, early successional habitats to to thrive. Um, and again, these timber management activities help support the uh, wood products industry in the state. Um, so this, this bottom picture here is from somewhat recent timber harvest uh, over in the Harvey, uh, Harvey's Creek area. Um, this area that's forested here, you can kind of see, that was actually harvested probably about like 25 years ago or so. Um, so you kind of see the, the difference of something that's currently being harvested and what that future forest is, is gonna be looking like in about 20 years. Um, from that same timber harvest, you can see all this vegetation that's starting to pop up. These are all oak seedlings. So, you know, that's going to be our future forest um, in the coming years. So we are dual certified uh, under the Forest Stewardship Council and uh, Sustainable Forestry Initiative standards. Um, they're, they're, we go through third party audits um, to make sure that our, uh, our you know, the way that we're doing things in the state forest land uh, is as sustainable as we can be. Um, we are one of the largest dual certified forests in North America. Um, so if you see any kind of uh, paper, anything that's made out of paper, any kind of wood product. Um, so right here is just a, a tissue box. Uh, you can see that uh, these products are made from uh, sources that come from uh, forest land that's uh, certified forests. So uh, any kind of natural gas extraction you can see within the district here. Um, we don't have any currently on state forest land, um, but in Susquehanna County uh, and a little bit of Wyoming County, you could kind of see here the uh, active natural gas drilling wells. Um, really none, none present here within the Lackawanna, Wayne and Luzerne County areas. Mostly it's all in Susquehanna and Northern Wyoming County uh, off of state forest land. So uh, we don't have any of that in our district. Uh, as I said before, past mining history, uh, we have a lot of abandoned mine uh, sites. So you can kind of see here, uh, the red triangles uh, are the different coal mining operations, mostly in the uh, Lackawanna and uh, Wyoming Valley area. And then just outside of Hazleton, there was a, a, a heavy mining uh, uh, history right here too. And then the kind of beige uh, polygons, that's all the abandoned mine reclamation, abandoned mine sites. Uh, so you can see just how uh, prevalent it really is in our area. Um, some of the work that we're doing, uh, so this is the Avondale mine site. Um, we uh, did a big reclamation project, graded everything out, uh, reseeded it. Um, with the help of a lot of volunteer work, we, we did uh, some tree planting there. Uh, so that was about 100 acres, the reclamation site. Um, pretty much uh, re reduces the acid mine drainage, uh, control a lot of the, the stormwater runoff and any kind of hazards that were in the area here. Uh, there was some deep uh, mine pits and stuff that people used uh, for illegal dumping, uh, different uh, uh, garbage and waste and, and whatnot. So, so we partnered with DP and the Bureau of Man and Mine Reclamation uh, to conduct this project. And then uh, we also have some other projects in the works uh, in our district to do some mine reclamation work uh, as well. Uh, so with that, like I said, there's uh, you know, some, some of these mining shafts that are, are still open, kind of scattered throughout the district and throughout the area as a whole. Um, 
these provide a uh, really good habitat for bats. Um, so to kind of help help that and help protect the bats, uh, we do try to um, keep the public out of there and uh, put up these barricades, as you can see uh, at the openings of the mine shafts uh, to really protect the, those, those bat habitats. So there's work going on in the district uh, to protect the bats. Uh, so forest fires, um, you know, we are legally mandated to provide for the protection of all wildlands in the Commonwealth. Um, so that's on state forest land and private lands. Uh, so the district does a lot of work uh, for prevention, suppression, uh, investigation, and preparedness. Um, you know, we do a lot of public outreach with uh, Smokey Bear um, and, and the prevention side of things. Suppression, obviously, we're tasked with all the uh, wildfires throughout the, the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, investigation, we do investigate those fires um, if they are arson and uh, preparedness, you know, working with the local volunteer fire companies and making sure that they're uh, well equipped to assist us uh, in, uh, you know, suppressing these wildfires. Uh, that's a lot of what we do as well. Um, we also send crews out west to help uh, western states uh, kind of in the summertime uh, when they have their fire season. Uh, really heating up, we'll send crews out uh, two weeks at a time to uh, assist those states uh, for wildfire suppression as well. So you can see here a map of uh, the wildfires throughout our district from 2012 uh, to 2022. Uh, most of those areas are kind of in the uh, valley area here in Lackawanna and Luzerne County. Uh, number of reasons. Uh, a lot of our wildfires are human caused. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, people debris burning in the springtime. Uh, people are out kind of doing some spring cleanup, burning leaves, uh, garbage and whatnot. Uh, and the conditions are just naturally really dry uh, in that springtime. And, uh, you know, people are burning trash. They walk inside for a drink or something and wind blows a cardboard box into their forested area in the backyard. And, uh, and, and there we have the wildfire take off. Um, also in these areas, like I said, with the past mining history, we have a lot of uh, illegal ATV use in these areas. So uh, we do have a lot of arson fires in these areas because of that. Um, uh, so that's why you kind of see a lot of the heavy uh, wildfire activity kind of in this Lackawanna and Luzerne County area here. Uh, so forest health, uh, we do manage for uh, non-native invasive insects and plants. Um, uh, the invasives are a large negative impact uh, on the environment and the economy and, and sometimes human safety as well. So it's a lot of money and uh, energy goes into managing, uh, you know, uh, controlling the spread of these invasives. We do have a early detection rapid response protocol in place. So uh, you can see here the list of uh, invasive plants that we have on that list. So. Our, dis our district's trained up to uh, kind of spot any of these upcoming uh, invasive plants that might not really be uh, so prevalent on our state forest land, but uh, if we do any of the maintenance staff or any of the forestry staff do see one of these species growing, um, there's a protocol in place to kind of um, map those areas out and mitigate that as quickly as possible while it's still kind of manageable and before they really take off. Uh, to a larger scale problem uh, that becomes more challenging to, um, to kind of get a hold of. Um, so we do yearly defoliation flights, uh, mostly for spongy moth and other uh, defoliation, defoliating pests. Um, we'll go on the plane and fly the whole district and kind of map out areas that we see uh, if any of the forested area uh, becoming defoliated and then go back and ground truth that uh, and just kind of see what we have going on in the district uh, as uh, wild, uh, widespread effort kind of. Uh, so we have some mixed methods for treatment. Um, you know, uh, as far as invasive plants go, uh, cutting is usually, uh, you know, sometimes it could be, uh, it's usually one of the easiest methods. Uh, it's the cheapest method, uh, but it sometimes is not always the most uh, efficient. Uh, so sometimes we use biological controls uh, different uh, insects and things that may feed on uh, either the invasive insects or plants. Uh, we also do use the use of herbicides and insecticides to 
uh, get a handle on some of these more, um, uh, let's say, pro prolific uh, invasive pests. Uh, so some of the common uh, pests that we do deal with, uh, hemlock woolly adelgid uh, and elongated hemlock scale. Uh, we do have one treatment area on state forest land over at Thornhurst in our uh, Manny Gordon recreation area. Uh, we'll do soil injections uh, with an insecticide uh, to kind of get a handle on these. Um, so you can see here, this is a, a, a twig from hemlock tree and these little tiny white uh, cottony looking masses uh, are actually the hemlock woolly adelgid uh, cocoons, kind of. So the little black dots, so these are just starting to form. This was in the fall. Uh, weather's starting to get colder. When the weather gets cold, they'll start to kind of form these uh, white kind of cottony masses, uh, protect them from the, the cold. Um, so that's one of the pests that we, we, uh, that we manage for. And we also uh, have one or two areas that we're currently kind of reviewing uh, the possibility of doing some treatment for those sites as well. Um, emerald ash borer, uh, you know, kind of came through the area, uh, wiped out a lot of the uh, ash that we have in the district and across the state, um, but we do have some treatment areas that we do stem injections on um, to kind of preserve uh, some of those mature ash. Uh, we have three, three sites, one at Thornhurst, one at Makanaqua, and then over at Harvest Creek, we have another treatment site. Uh, every year, uh, so the, they're on a two-year rotation. Uh, so one year we'll treat Thornhurst and Makanaqua. Uh, there's approximately 39 trees um, there in Harvey's Creek. Uh, we have another treatment site that we'll treat that on uh, the, the off year. Uh, the, these uh, treatments are pretty costly and they're time consuming. Um, but, but they are worth it. Uh, we do have a lot of success with treating for these. Um, a lot of the areas that we, we have treatment at, um, we have great success. Uh, they're doing really well. And kind of in neighboring areas uh, near the treatment sites, uh, a lot of the ash that have become infected are dead. So uh, they are working for us. Uh, we also treat for spongy moth. Um, here's the helicopter you can see here uh, from previous years uh, treating for that. In our district uh, this coming year for 2023, we have some pretty low populations, so we won't be treating, um, but there are some neighboring districts that have some heavy populations that uh, we kind of expect to see an increase of activity within our district uh, in the next coming years here. So, um, so those are some of the forest pests that we commonly deal with. Uh, so rural, rural and community forestry, uh, we do a lot of public outreach. Um, as you can see here, just in our forest district alone, uh, about 57% of the, the uh, area is private forested land, and only about 10% is pri uh, public forest land. Uh, so between game lands and state forest land. Um, and you know, the work that we do to educate the public on sustainable forestry practices uh, is really important and it's really huge. Um, you know, what we're doing on public state forest land and, and public game lands, you know, we know that we're managing those those lands sustainably, uh, but sometimes private landowners, you know, whether they know or not, uh, don't really manage those lands uh, the most sustainable sometimes. So a lot of the work that we do as service foresters uh, is to educate uh, those private landowners. Um, so you can see the list of stuff that we do here uh, as service foresters, uh, working with private landowners, uh, giving technical technical assistance. Um, we do a lot of work with the uh, urban community forestry uh, program, so tree, uh, urban tree plantings. Um, we do a lot of work with riparian forest buffers, uh, reviewing, reviewing plans for a variety of uh, federal um, funded uh, programs for private landowners. We also staff county fairs. Uh, we have a bunch of other uh, educational events for youth. Uh, we help out with the Envirothon competitions. Uh, for all the counties within our district. Um, so all this work that we do is pretty important uh, in educating the public on, on sustainable forestry. So this map just kind of shows um, my coverage area, Lackawanna and Luzerne counties, and then Austin is the other service forester for our district, uh, covering the other three counties. Um, so if you have any questions at your private forest land and uh, you live in uh, Lackawanna and Luzerne County, contact myself. 
uh, or you can contact our office to get Austin's info. Uh, if you have uh, property in Wayne, just go into Wyoming County. Uh, volunteer opportunities, like I said, a lot of these projects that we have on state forest land are done through the work of volunteers. Um, Pennsylvania Outdoor Corps was started a couple of years ago, uh, kind of like the Civilian Conservation Corps. Uh, it employs young adults uh, and they go throughout the, the districts and state parks and do a lot of uh, conservation projects um, on our uh, district. Uh, they do a lot of work in Moon Lake area and over in Seven Tubs. You can kind of see here, this is Seven Tubs area. Uh, they do uh, some trail rehabilitation projects, laying stone. Um, sometimes they build bridges over, uh, uh, hiking trail bridges over creeks, uh, things like that. Keystone Trails Association, um, they help us all a lot with uh, maintaining our uh, state forest hiking trail, the Pincho Trail. Uh, we also work with Trout Unlimited, uh, the Air Conservancy, uh, PA Environmental Council, and a number of other trail groups um, kind of help keep our trails uh, open and clear uh, and, and maintained. <clears throat> we do also have the conservation volunteers uh, through DCNR. If you are interested in volunteering, um, you could go on our website under volunteers, um, or you could contact myself and I could get you uh, pushed in the right direction. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering your time uh, within our state forest land, uh, our recreation forester spearheads that and uh, he could get you set up with some projects within our district uh, if you're interested in volunteer work. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, if there's any questions, we could get to that. We did have a few questions that popped up in the chat uh, during your presentation. I believe one or two of them might have been answered later on. Um, but I will go ahead and read what we have. And if anyone else, else has any questions, please pop them in the chat and I will ask them uh, once we've received them. The first question was uh, in relation to bat habitats on um, in, the, in the caves in the abandoned mine lands. Um, they were wondering if uh, how, how the bats have been impacted by white nose syndrome in our area. Yeah, uh, I'm, I can't speak too in depth to that. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the bat populations. I know they have been declining with white nose syndrome. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't really speak too, too much, uh, just given my experience with it. Um, I could get some more information right. if you want to reach out to me, though. Um, the next question uh, was if you know if there have been any surveys for fungal diversity within the forest district. Um, to my knowledge, uh, not off the top of my head, I, I, I don't believe, uh, not to say there's not, but I, just to my knowledge, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. All right. Um, well, we're... we're we're going down the uh, we're going down the line of um, ecological questions here. Uh, the next one is asking if there uh, if the rare, threatened, or endangered species within the district primarily rely on successional forests or mature forest. Uh, so really, it depends on the species itself. Um, again, uh, all species don't need the same type of habitat. Um, so some, some do rely on a, a more mature forest, uh, some rely on open grassland, some rely on, you know, kind of a, a mix of, of the two. Um, so it really depends on the species itself. Um, so I, I can't really give one broad answer to that, I guess. The next question is asking if there's any plots of old growth forest within the district. So uh, within our state forest land, not really. Um, Salt Springs State Park up in Susquehanna County. Uh, there's there's a patch of old growth forest there, um, and then over at uh, Ricketts Glen State Park, which half of it's kind of in our district uh, boundary. Uh, there's some old growth forest out there as well, uh, but specifically on our state forest land, no. 
The next question is asking how you're dealing with uh, graffiti within the district. Yeah, so unfortunately, graffiti and uh, uh, littering is, you know, a, a big issue in, in any district, really. Um, you know, we, we we try to clean it up and just kind of uh, keep those areas patrolled with our ranger staff. Um, so, you know, sometimes we do have a lot of graffiti, uh, you know, in those high high use areas such as uh, uh, the seven tubs. So, so we 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 try to keep it patrolled. Um, so that way we don't have those issues, but uh, sometimes we do, and uh, we try to keep it clean as, as possible. In relation to the Emerald Ash Borer, um, there, there's a question about uh, whether the ash trees that were lost were made up a significant percentage of the overall tree population. Uh, so in our specific district, um, not really. Like I said, a lot of our district is kind of that, that oak forest type, um, but we do have pockets of ash uh, kind of scattered on uh, some, some of the areas in our district. Um, in those areas where we did have uh, ash and we did not treat, uh, we, we pretty much lost most of that ash. Um, I know on private lands and I do with private landowners uh, in areas that they do have uh, mostly ash, um, you know, the, all their ash stands are, are completely gone, they're dead, and we have a lot of uh, invasives that kind of take over, uh, so that, that becomes a management issue. Um, but it, as far as on our state forest land, uh, we don't really have that high of an ash component as some other forest districts kind of have, so. All right, well, that was the last question that we have in the chat. If anyone thinks of a question after this presentation is done, uh, feel free to email myself or email Julian, um, and we will do our best to answer those questions for you. Um, I will be sharing out a recording of this presentation. Um, realistically, look for it in your inbox early next week. Um, and. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today as we learned about Pincho State Forest. Um, and thank you, Julian, for all of the wonderful information that you were able to share with us today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, and if you, anybody has any questions, feel free to email me um, or give me a phone call. <laughs>